Stand by. Welcome to Think Tech Friday, part of the Think Tech Radio series on AM 760 KGU, broadcasting across the islands and raising public awareness in Hawaii. And you're live. Thank you for tuning in to Think Tech Friday, the show about science, technology, and things that matter. I'm your host, Attila Saras. Have you ever wanted to skydive, to feel like you're flying, but experience none of the danger? Joining us today is Kathy Custer. She is the creative mind behind Hawaii Indoor Skydiving, a new venture that uses a vertical wind tunnel to stimulate the experience of falling out of an airplane without the anxiety. Thank you for joining us on the show, Kathy. Thank you, Attila. Um, throughout the show, if you have any questions, the number to call in is 296-5467. That's 296-5467. And this show is being live streamed on Spreaker.com. That's S, P as in Paul, R as in Randy, E-A-K-E-R.com. And the video of us doing the show is being live streamed on Ustream.com. That's U as in the letter, stream.com. So if you want to catch any of these live streams, uh, links for both of them are on thinktechhawaii.com. That's T-H-I-N-K-T-E-C-H-H-A-W-A-I-I.com. But before we jump into the conversation, uh, joining us is Sonny Bongwali. Uh, he has an update on the State of Hawaii's Business Technology Transformation Plan. Thank you for joining us in the show. I appreciate you coming down. Absolutely. Great to be here. So tell me a little bit about what's going on. Well, uh, the, uh, the state of Hawaii is uh, 30 years behind in technology in terms of the government and the services we provide. So uh, the governor has uh, exhibited tremendous leadership and vision trying to uh, get us to, you know, catch up to the 21st century. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> so uh, we're, uh, so we've published an elaborate plan that sort of uh, looks at the entire transformation of not only the business processes and all the business services that we provide in the government, uh, but also the technology itself and getting it up to you know, get Hawaii to be the best in the, in, in, in the union, basically. So we've been working uh, uh, very hard, and last October we published this elaborate 1,432-page, 20-page uh, oh plan, wow. 20 plans, uh, which looked at comprehensive transformation for the entire state. Uh, you know, the state of Hawaii is a large enterprise. It's an $11 billion state enterprise. And uh, we provide 220 business functions and 36 lines of business and services that we provide to our citizens. And, and out, of those, out of those 220, about 150 are citizen-facing, and less than 5% are online. So people got to wait in line, and, oh, in order. and we're trying to get everything online so that, you know, mobile ready, you can get all these services and you can interact directly with that. So that this plan kind of puts it all together. So when you say we're behind, in what areas are we behind and, and how, how are we working to improve those areas? Uh, pretty much behind in everything. Uh, oh, really? So I came from the federal <laughs> government, yeah. I, I came from D.C. and then federal mm -hmm. government and industry, and so, you know, working in the Boeing company and then the federal government in various uh, capacities. Uh, we're, we're behind in being generous, you know, 20 to 30 year plus. Oh, wow. Uh, so, uh, but in some areas, uh, you know, what, so what we're trying to do is, uh, you know, in security, privacy, uh, I think uh, we need to upgrade that. The infrastructure itself needs to work so that, uh, you know, IT can work like a utility, so it should just be on and just kind of work. Mm. Uh, mo most of the applications are inward facing and they're built in COBOL and software programs that have been defunct uh, many, many years ago. COBOL is a little <laughs> old. But, uh... And so we're trying to get all of these things upgraded so that uh, we can be a digital government. And when you have a digital government and online government, you can directly interact with that and you know conduct business uh, directly. Is there a model that you're looking at, another state or another country that has done this already that you're trying to compare us to? Yeah, there is. Uh, actually, Michigan and Utah are considered mm -hmm. to be the best, and uh, we have uh, uh, you know sort of uh, looked at them and looked at best practices and lessons learned. But I'm happy to report, actually, I'm flying to D.C. later on today, actually. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just actually on the way. Uh, but I stopped by, and uh, the reason uh, we're going to D.C. is we're collecting an award. We're the mm. only state to be recognized for our plan. It's considered the best in the country. So not bad for Hawaii. Wow. Coming out of nowhere. Uh, but, uh, you know, so we are uh, very, pretty proud of that. But uh, really, I think now it's all about execution of projects. So we have an open data site, data.hawaii.gov. We also have a, a transformation plan that uh, is, is uh, 
is uh, uh, you know uh, published openly at oimt.hawaii.gov. So all of these things we have redone our websites. There are eighteen websites now. Responsive design, mobile ready. So a lot of stuff happening. Mobile it's, app starting. You know, so you'll start seeing a lot of change in Hawaii. So you know, don't count us true. out. It's true. It's true. I went to the eHawaii.gov website just yeah. uh, what was it? Maybe last week. And yeah. it, it looked totally different. It was just. Versus Google like. Yeah, and so we're doing that, and uh, actually we've also used USA Search, so it, it's much more responsive to uh, uh, having an index where we can search and get you know things uh, easily found and actually uh, represent the information uh, easier to navigate and understand. And we're going to be announcing next month uh, some more projects and some new look and feel that mm. we're going for the best of the web. So yeah, we're kind of working hard. Here. So are are you uh, looking to are you looking for local contractors to fill some of those needs, or how's how's that affecting us here in the economy? That's a good question. I think uh, for too long, a lot of the uh, business here has sort of gone back to the mainland. We've kind of relied on that, and that's fine to you know because we've not built some of the capacity here. Uh, we're trying to change that as well by uh, we're going to be announcing uh, five data centers and you know oh. trying to try to invest in Hawaii itself so that we're it's survivable here uh, but also try to look at local business so that uh, not only can we uh, you know develop the applications here but uh, support them here uh, recently for example we brought in about 40 interns from the local colleges University of Hawaii HPU and 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 what we found is and Shamanad and others but what we found is that the kids were able to uh, let me just call them kids for now because yes. I've got some gray hair now oh. <laughs> but uh, they can uh, vote you know. yeah I know, I know. <laughs> young adults let's put young adults uh, they have done an amazing job and if you go to data.hpu.edu they have taken some of the open data and mashed it up and made it really cool and uh, and you can find uh, how you know uh, fuel prices are going up and down in Hawaii and mm. look at all this data and it's all open so it's amazing stuff that's happening so we're trying to get everyone involved so the the, the local talent can help you with some of that program those programming skills yeah and yeah. maybe we can have some uh, local contractors help you maybe with the wiring and data and networking uh, portion of that or? A absolutely I think uh, you know People have plenty of Akuma here, and we just got to invest in them and, and make sure they can get uh, trained. And, and that, that's what the governor has done. You know, he's, he's got three points here. He's got three parts of the New Day plan. You know, grow a sustainable economy, and uh, second yes. is uh, invest in the workforce, and third, transform government. So we we're transforming government, but we're also investing in the workforce, and we're going to train all the programmers as well to get to the newer technologies, but uh, we're already doing that. Uh, and, and I think, uh, the, you know, people can pick it up pretty quick. And so now you've won this award because the plan is is good, and and uh, what we're here to talk about is is the the status of this plan. Yes. So so where where what's the uh, where are we at today? Where's where's our gauge? Yeah. So the, uh, so good questions again, and a lot of the information is on the website. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, but what we're doing now is. Uh, we uh, so the first thing is we got twenty five million dollars last year in a supplemental budget from the legislature. That's the first ever. So they've shown a lot of confidence in getting the projects going. So we've started twenty three projects. Uh, some of them like with the website modernization, the data open data site, and so on and so forth. Uh, establishing a cloud infrastructure locally here. You know a lot of stuff like that. So a lot of that's happening. Uh, and now what we're doing is going for what we call the biennium budget for the next two years. Mm -hmm. So we're in the middle of the discussions with the legislature and my job is to convince them to show them that, hey, we have, uh, uh, you know, got 30 years of, uh, should we say, underfunding and, and yeah, you know, a real disaster that could happen here because a lot of these data centers are sitting, like for example, one of them is right here. Uh, uh, sort of one mile away from the water and it's kind of below sea level. You know, that's not a good thing for data centers, actually. So uh, <laughs> I, I know which one you're talking about. I'm not sure if I can call it by name. Yes, but, uh, uh, yes. I, I didn't call it by name yes. for purpose. But uh, but uh, so the challenge is this data center study report just shows that we got to really invest in Hawaii and start getting this shored up, so to speak. So I just think in order to avoid uh, some uh, real challenges here, I've given them a comprehensive plan. We've given them a reasonable uh, uh, investment. So we're only talking about another uh, six tenths of one cent on the dollar is what we're asking for uh, of the overall of, of the you know of budget to kind of get this thing going. And so uh, so far we are uh, making some good progress. But let's see and, uh, and hope for hope for the best. I think it's going to be good and and. Um so what should we expect in the next year? I think the next year, first of all, uh, you'll see, first of all, a lot more web services. Mm -hmm. uh, we also want to launch a, a portal called myhawaii.gov. 
So it's your government, your way. Kind of you can see and, and look at how some of the services can be customized, and you can look at your on your mobile phone or iPad, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, get your app, and then start interacting directly with services. So that's one thing we're going to do: uh, improve the infrastructure, uh, improve the shared services, improve the security and privacy. At least start doing that. Uh, but more importantly, launch some really important programs like modernize the tax system, which has uh, had some challenges. Uh, modernize the way we look at financial management and human resources management. We can't even get some of the financial data correct. We don't even know. Even it's like spreadsheets and mm. emails and <laughs> link them together. <laughs> so, well. so I think I think we need a system where you can have an authoritative data source that kind of works. Uh, we're going to look at health IT, you know, health technology, uh, Obamacare and other things uh, on island. A lot of work is being done to really get all these systems linked together. So things like that. Wow, that's going to be really exciting. Well, thank you for joining us on the thank show. You. Really appreciate you coming by. Absolutely. And I look forward to seeing you again with another update. Absolutely. Thank you so much. For thank you, Sonny. Have a great flight into D.C. Yeah. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be back after the break. We're back, we're live, and you're listening to... Here we go. And you're live. We're back, we're live, and you're listening to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Saras. When we last uh, left the conversation, we were talking with Sonny Bonwali, who is the uh, Chief Information Officer for the State of Hawaii. And in case you missed any part of that program, feel free to jump on our website, pick up the podcast at Think Tech Hawaii. Dot com. Um, if you missed any of those uh, other URLs that he also provided, that's data.hpu.edu, or you can go to data.hawaii.gov, and uh, they're transforming the uh, information infrastructure plan for the state of Hawaii. Very exciting stuff, and I think we're going to see, uh, you know, just as, as uh, members of the state, we're going to see a lot of changes. Uh, on the way that we operate, which is really nice. Uh, but uh, on to our next topic, we have with us Kathy Custer. And uh, if you uh, are just tuning in, she's the creative mind behind Hawaii Indoor Skydiving. And it's a new venture that uses vertical wind tunnels to stimulate the experience of falling out of an airplane without the anxiety. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, that, that's the tagline I wrote for you. I don't know if that's, that's oh, your no, official. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's really good. It sounds good because it does have the word anxiety in there because I, I haven't skydived before, but the reason I haven't is because it's, it seems a little scary. <laughs> and my wife won't let me do anything that requires a helmet. So <laughs> I, I think skydiving requires a helmet, so I'm not allowed. But um, Yeah, I don't know if a helmet will help you when you're skydiving. <laughs> well, yeah, you're probably right about that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you skydived before? Um, yeah, actually, I've jumped out of a plane three times. Oh, mm -hmm. and every time, is it is it more scary, or is it just you kind of get used to it, or how's, how's yeah, it feel? Yeah, well, I have heard that they've done studies to see the how the body reacts to jumping out of an airplane. Mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be equivalent to doing coke, cocaine. Really? Yeah, so... Um, so it should be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the adrenaline rush yeah. every time. <laughs> So it's an adrenaline. Well, I mean, because you're falling to your death. It's kind of like bungee jumping. It's the same thing. Oh, right? I think bungee jumping is way scarier. Really? Yeah, I've done that one too. Oh no. Yeah. Oof. And so all these extreme sports have have uh, prepped you for this <laughs> new adventure, which um, is less scary. Less scary. <laughs> Just and, as fun. And we saw some videos online. Um, we're going to put links up to them on the ThinkTechHawaii.com website. Okay, great. Uh, where. Where we where uh, you can jump inside, and uh, as an instructor, you can do all these tricks. And uh, but as a, as an individual user, you can you can float around, right? Yeah, so pretty you, much. Every time you get a little better. So. And uh, so, it sounds to me like you know something like this doesn't come overnight. Creating a giant wind tunnel and and, uh, and putting it here on Oahu, that's a big deal. How long have you been working on this? I've been working on this for four years. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. Four years. It's like a college education. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And you know what it feels like? It. I've learned so much. It's just amazing. I've really appreciated this project. <laughs> well, so, you know, I'm guessing you've been to other tunnels like this before Before you decided to create your own. You went somewhere and you said, wow, this is great. We should have this in Hawaii, right? Yeah, pretty much. My parents actually retired as farmers in San Diego, California, and there's not much to do on the farm. But they did retire close to a wind tunnel. So every mm. time I go visit them, I'd fly indoors. So you hit that right on. 
Mm-hmm. And and so you, you'd want to you'd want to go to the wind tunnel. Sorry, I'm starting out the little video here, so oh, we can yeah. see it. Yeah, look at this guy. He's he's doing acrobatic tricks and everything. <laughs> it's, like, it's pretty much like an anti gravity chamber. You can run up walls and do backflips and go as high as 27 feet back down again to zero. So as mm-hmm. the owner, you're gonna you really wanted to just ride this for free all the time, <laughs> every day, right? Oh, that'd be so much fun. You, you wanted to do this little. Maneuver where you're 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 doing uh, what is it you're swimming in the in the, in the air. <laughs> it looks like it, doesn't it? That is awesome. I, I, <laughs> I want to do it. And um, but like you know, how would you know say if I wanted to go visit mm-hmm. this 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 center, which uh, we can't say where it's going to be yet, but it's right. coming. It's going to be on Oahu, Central Oahu, uh, Central Oahu. Um, <laughs> And, and by the way, for those of you listening, this is the exclusive. This is the first time you've heard of this because this is the first time we've been given the permission by the developers to talk about it and and make the announcement to the world. So That's correct. we got the scoop. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> and um, so, you know, me as, a, as an individual, I would show up and, and how does it work? Yeah, so basically, as you enter, you're going to be going through a wind tunnel history museum. So that's your first experience. You get to see the history of tunnels, and then you go and check in with the front counter, and then they'll escort you to the aerodynamics training room. So for 15 to 20 minutes, you are going to learn aerodynamics, and they're going to show you how different movements of your body affect the direction that you're going to go in this wind tunnel. And it's really tiny movements. For example, if you just take your hands and you were to close your fingers, you'll rise in the wind tunnel. If you open them, you'll fall. And that's just your fingers. You know, I've done that. When I'm driving, I put my hand out the window. <laughs> and, and I can kind of do like this little snake pattern. Yeah. Outside. But it's the same thing. You, so you open and close. But what else can you do with your body? Like, yeah. So if you drop your right arm, for example, you'll start spinning to the right. And if oh. you drop your leg as well, you'll spin even faster. If you're flying on your belly and you um, cup your, your belly so you push your back out, it'll actually scoop the air and it'll shoot you right to the top of the tunnel. So these, these little tricks, but when you first go in there, you know, you're kind of like a baby and you're learning how to walk. So you're learning how to fly. So they'll teach you some, some tricks and tips to get you flying nice and comfortably that first time. Mm. So after your aerodynamics training is complete, then they'll take you to the changing room. You get suited up. You get a helmet, goggles, earplugs, closed-toed shoes, and you get this nice, fun jumpsuit to wear for the experience. Ooh. And the jumpsuit, <laughs> is there anything special about the jumpsuit? Does it have like they, wings? Or? They used to be. The older technology, the tunnels weren't as strong, so they did have to be really loose and flappy, and that helped you catch the air. Oh, so my belly would help because it would, it would be kind of loose and flappy. It would give me some more surface area, and it would shoot up to the top of the tunnel. Right? Yeah, oh, no. you were so funny. Yeah, definitely eat as much as you can before you come in. It'll, oh. I'm just kidding. Actually, that's, that's, that's a, that, that is an engineering consideration. You know, if you show up and you had a bunch of food... Yeah. Yeah. You don't want you don't want to eat before doing this, right? You can actually. I know we've asked questions about like that. Should we yeah. have a snack bar? What if somebody eats like a hot dog and they go into the wind tunnel? You know, what's yeah. that going to look like? Um, but yeah, it turns out it's not a nauseating experience. Like and, baby food. Yeah. That's the <laughs> and I can vouch for that. I actually get motion sickness to the extreme. I was scuba diving and I threw up underwater. I mean, who does that, what? right? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to feed the fish somehow. So. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, i got a really good show. Um, but basically, bringing back to wind tunnels, um, yeah, I've, I've flown several times and I've never gotten sick. So, yeah, it's a very comfortable experience. So basically, after you ex- um, do the suit up, next you go into the wind tunnel. So you'll have an instructor there with you, and the fans are off when you first enter. So you'll walk into the tunnel, and you're going to be standing on something that looks like a net, but it feels like a trampoline, so it's a little bit springy. Mm. They'll have you lay down on your stomach. Um, in that flying position that they'll teach you. It's kind of like this with your hands. Um, kind of like up, so. Yeah, up by your head. Kind of like a salute with both hands. Yep, that's okay, correct. Okay, got it. That's All a right. good way of describing it. Thank mm-hmm. you. I know a radio show, right? They can't see me. They can't see you. But we well, have a camera. We have so a camera. <laughs> maybe the people on Ustream can see us. <laughs> they have an advantage. <laughs> yes, they do. So, yeah. So, then once you're on your stomach and you're comfortable, then the instructor will motion to the control guy and he'll turn on the fans and you're, you'll slowly rise. And you'll hover at about four and a half feet. Um, and then once you get good, you can go as high as 27 and back down again. And is there any chance, like, if I turn the wrong way, I'll slam into the side? Definitely. Really? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, because you control your direction. So um, every flyer does have an instructor in there with them, and they have been trained for weeks. I mean, just countless hours on how to anticipate people's movements and things. But wind tunnels in general, they're really not dangerous. There's never been a death in a wind tunnel, and then rarely are there any kind of accidents at all. In fact, um, it's typically the more advanced flyers who get injured because they're trying all sorts of crazy things. 
So. Mm. <laughs> And it's only one person at a time, or do you have... So one person for beginners with the instructor, and then they'll allow skydivers or military paratroopers to come in and fly in teams. You do have to be careful, though, because if you fly together, you have that ability to cut each other's air off. So if someone flies over you, they might end up landing on you. Yeah, because you'll cut their air off. Hence the trampoline. (laughs) Yeah. You just fall off. Yeah, so that's why they only allow that for more advanced flyers. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, is this something that the military uses to train paratroopers since you brought it up? Oh, it's a huge thing. Yeah, as, as everyone or most people are aware of, the military is having some major financial cutbacks. And mm. I've been told that they're not even taking up their helicopters or airplanes to have these paratroopers jump out of them because they're trying to cut back on costs. And so wind tunnels are a low-cost alternative to training. I mean, you don't have to fuel it, staff it, maintain it. You know what I mean? We take care of all of that, but planes are just so expensive. Um, and also, we are, we're not relying on weather. So, you know, any day of the week, they can come in and train. You know, wouldn't it be cool if you could put on, like, a helmet with some goggles? <laughs> and then you'd have little screens in there, right? Oh, yeah. And so if you're a military and, and you and you jump, right? See people shooting at yeah. you? <laughs> well, you, you pretend. Like, and you, you know, you can dodge bullets or whatever. Yeah. And oh, you that'd can, be great. You can have, like, a, a, a scenery underneath you. Mm-hmm. And you're slowly falling towards it. Yeah, birds are flying by. Yeah. Superman. I am adding value to your product here. <laughs> Santa Claus for the kids, right? <laughs> I think I think one year in opening, you should you should look into something like that. It's very yeah, cool stuff. It is a good idea. You're right. We could probably project that onto the side of the tunnel. Well, you know, just many years back, I, I'm from the I, I'm I'm a tech person, right? So, uh-huh. um, you know, many years back when I was still a teenager, I was doing flight simulators, and oh. these are the kind of things that we used to have. We used to have the helmets with the motion sensitive. So that wow. stuff is old. I mean, it's it's <laughs> old. So I'm sure you could pick some of that stuff up and put it in there. That yeah, sounds great. like Yeah, thank you for that tip. Oh, of course. So, you know, it sounds to me like you're building this tunnel. Are there big ones? Are there small ones in, uh, across the world? Or are you building a, the biggest or are you building a <laughs> medium-sized one? Yeah, that's a good question. So as far as vertical wind tunnels for the indoor skydiving experience, the largest tunnel is 16-foot diameter. There's only two of them in the entire entire world that I know of. One's in the U.S. and North Carolina, and they, it'll fly up to 12 people, which is a ton of people. 16 foot, wow. 16 foot diameter. And then the smallest... It's as big as a studio here. Huh? Pretty much. Yeah. I know, it's wow. big. Yeah, it is big. Oof. And then the smallest tunnel is 10 foot diameter, and that's actually in Hollywood, California, mm. Universal Studios, that strip there, and it's um, it'll only fly two people. So military paratroopers and skydivers don't very often go there. So we've chosen a 14-foot diameter flying chamber. We might go with a 12-foot, a little bit smaller, but it'll fly four to six people comfortably, or mm-hmm. as many as eight if we do the 14-foot one. And the reason we chose that is because we do have four paratrooping teams on this island and then two drop zones for skydiving on our North Shore. So we know that they're going to be interested in coming out and having a good time in it. So is is the reason uh, that, the, that the size is so small is because you need exponential power to provide that, that thrust, that, that wind thrust? Is, is that what you... Is that That's why you're not making it 18 foot, for example? <laughs> yeah, it takes, it takes a lot of space and a, a lot of electricity, a lot of power to get that wind pushed through. But you're right, as the wind enters, as the air enters the flying chamber, the chamber does compress. It gets smaller, and that's how it builds its strength. So the air actually moves at 160 miles per hour, mm. and depending on your flying position. So if you're flying head down, you're going to need 160 miles per hour. Otherwise, you'll hit the ground, right? So you're going to have a 160-mile-per-hour wind going against your face. (laughs) That's right. Wow. So no loose fillings. (laughs) Or double chins. Or double... Well, it'll be flapping. It'll just be flapping. Yeah. Flapping chin. (laughs) Aerodynamic chin. It it sounds like there's a lot of these, but, uh, you know... uh, are there a lot of wind tunnels that we could expect? I mean, are you just building just the one? Are we going to have more? Yeah, so for Hawaii, we're going to start with one. Um, there are 54 tunnels around the world and about a dozen more under construction. So, um, Oh, so it's popular. Yeah, oh, it's very popular. In fact, there's just been a real real boom of tunnels. There's a mega trend going on right now as more and more people are seeking high adrenaline activities, and that's what's fueled the growth of these wind tunnels. So here in Hawaii, we have very strong demographics for wind tunnels, like strong customer target market. And so it actually takes three operating wind tunnels on the mainland to make up the opportunity that we have here on Hawaii. Oh, so it's good for tourism, it's good for business, it's good for local people? Military. Yeah, military? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about wind tunnels when we get back from the break. Stay tuned. This is Think Tech. Stand by. And your life. 
We're back. We're live. And thank you for listening. We're uh, talking with Kathy Custer, and we're talking about wind tunnels. But not just any wind tunnels. They're the kind that you can actually fly in, as if you were <laughs> jumping out of an airplane. And it's coming to Oahu soon. Can we say how soon or no? Yeah, 18 months, two years, yeah. Because it takes time for construction and things. Oh, cool. And it's yeah. going to come in central Oahu. We can't say where. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, it sounds to me like this is a, you know, we're a tech show. So we like to talk about technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm guessing that wind tunnels from the 60s were a little bit different than what we had here today. <laughs> Maybe back then they had, you know... They were horizontal uh, back then. They were horizontal. <laughs> they had horses doing something on a, on a, on a hamster wheel. Uh, I'm guessing we have something new. Uh, what, what's so different about these uh, wind tunnels today? Yeah, so vertical wind tunnels for the purpose of indoor skydiving have changed quite a bit. So the very first one was built in 1982 in Las Vegas. Oh my gosh, so close. Oh, wow. It's actually still in operation today, it's just a couple blocks away from the strip. So basically the first wind tunnel that came into existence, the fan was located at the bottom. So it would actually blow the flyer up into the air. Mm -hmm. Well, they've later realized that it's more electrically efficient to suck them up into the air. So now the fans are located on top. And so oh. it's a sucking, not a blowing. It's a sucking action. And then it kind of go, comes back down around. I saw some pictures where it kind of, it's like a big donut, right? So it's also the newer technology. Okay. Um, so they kind of caught it right. In Las Vegas, it is what they call a recirculating system where the air never leaves the building. So it follows this route that it's created by construction materials, mm. air ducts, that does take it through the flying chamber, around the top of the building, around the sides, down underneath the ground, and then back up again through the flying chamber. So anyone who's planning on writing this, please take a shower first. <laughs> So we don't get that. The air never the it's plane. like stepping on an airplane, right? You don't want <laughs> you don't want that circulating too much. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Okay. Yeah, so Las Vegas got it right and then they almost, you know, went back and, and started getting it a little bit wrong again. They had open aired ones where it just mm. sucks the air out through the bottom, you know, sucks it up from the bottom through the flying chamber and all the equipment, the fans and things, and then just lets it back out into the universe. Um, but it uses so much more electricity because the air's not in motion. They need to take more stagnant air and create all this energy out of it. So, um, so yeah, now we're back to recirculating systems. And there's also portable ones that can be set up within five hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, so mobile. There's carnival-like ones that have huge stadiums that come with them, so you could do shows and things. Um, at one of the Olympic Games, I think it was in Mexico, I watched a video on it, and they, had, they brought that in and did indoor skydiving as a, as a show. Wow. That was really neat to see. So it so it's a spectator thing also. And I, and I know I've seen, you know, like the Lexus car commercials or I think it was <laughs> Lexus. I don't know. It was one of those luxury car commercials, you know, they put them in a wind tunnel and then there's that little that little stripe that kind of shows up. So mm -hmm. it sounds to me like this wind tunnel can be used for more than just entertainment, right? There's yeah. an education facet. Yeah, there definitely is. Um so the aerodynamics of quite a few things. I actually looked it up online before I came here. And it turns out they, for horizontal wind tunnels, and sometimes vertical, they'll look at jet wings, um, car windshields, 727s, missiles, space shuttles, ultra-fast race cars, speedboats, racing bicycles, and then that these tunnels can also help engineers figure out how wind tunnels interact with stationary objects such as buildings and bridges and find ways to make them stronger and safer. Oh, so maybe we could have right? like, because uh, I, I don't know if you were listening last week or no, two weeks ago. Maybe it was, no, two weeks ago, yeah. We had the kids in technology and science, mm. and uh, we're talking about these projects the kids were getting involved in, and one of them was building rockets. Oh. So imagine if we could bring a rocket in there, we can kind of <laughs> test the aerodynamic. Uh, would you guys be okay with that? Oh, or yeah, is, definitely. Is that, yeah, we were definitely open plans? for education. Mm -hmm. So to, so you can test the aer aerodynamics of your science project, right? Oh, that would be great. Yeah, we definitely plan on bringing in and inviting children to our wind tunnel. In fact, we plan on doing school tours. So for the Kiki, the little kids, they can come in and learn aerodynamics. And then one of the projects that we had planned is we'd give them all a string and a piece of paper, and they can fold that piece of paper in any shape they like. And then we'll put the kids in the tunnel and turn it on low power so they can see how their paper flies at the end of that string. So if they crumple it to a ball, it'll just fall. And if they give it wings, it'll fly. So they can see how that could be applied. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's neat. And, and so I'm guessing there's a certain age limit here, not, not just... We're not talking toddlers, right? We're, we're talking a little bit older? Actually, we kind of are. Really? Yeah, wind tunnels are really safe, and they're super fun for kids' birthday parties. So depending on your insurance, um, the typical is age four and up. Your Some, insurance? 
Yeah, no, the insurance. Your insurance. Yeah, my insurance. Your insurance. Yeah, not my <laughs> Are you going to own a wind tunnel too? No. <laughs> yeah, so depending on the wind tunnel's insurance, I mm -hmm. should say. So some even have insurance to accommodate as young as two years old. Wow. And in Singapore, they put a dog in the wind tunnel. He was flying around. He had goggles. Dogs. His lips were flapping. He looked really happy. <laughs> oh, wow. Is there like a weight limit on dogs? Because, is it, is it, you know, I have a big dog and I have a small dog. So maybe I could bring the bigger dog. Maybe that would be a little bit safer. The well, small you know, dog would just fly up. It's true. You know, if you put that big dog and small dog in the tunnel together. Yeah, what would happen? <laughs> because, you know, what if you brought, you know, uncle. Uncle's a little bit, a little bit on the heavy side. Likes to eat a little bit more than me. <laughs> and I go in there and, I, you know, I'm, I'm fit and not so flabby. How does that work? How does that work if two of us go in there? And we're yeah. So legs? if you have a, a larger person and a smaller person in the wind tunnel, the smaller person will rise above that larger person and they'll, they'll go pretty far up. And then the danger of that is if the smaller person or the larger person flies underneath the smaller person, not knowing because they're above them, they can cut off their airstream. So they'll actually land on top of each other. So what, um, what wind tunnel professionals do to accommodate that because sometimes skydivers are different sizes but they want to go in and practice their routine so we actually have weight belts similar to scuba diving oh, yeah and they belts. put on a weight belt so now they're the same weight and they can fly together they'll be right next right next to each other you know i think i saw something like this online where like two people were getting married in a wind tunnel oh that's Is romantic it, yeah. who had to wear the weight belt the wife of the husband <laughs> You know, there's no right answer to that. Yeah. So I'm just going to say there was no weight belt. <laughs> but but I, need the dress. I think it would be hard, you know, for the for the uh, person doing the ceremony if they had a little book. Can you bring other oh, things yeah. in there? Or, or I mean, can you bring like a can you bring like a soda and like kind of <laughs> grab it like this or do one of those extreme, you know, Mountain Dew type of commercials? Oh, that would be wild. I know. I think it'd be so fun to have like Hawaii Five-0 come in and do like an action scene where like the bad guy flies in the wind tunnel and there's like bullets flying and like the cops go in, you know, and they're all flying around each other. Um, so as far as bringing in things to the wind tunnel, I've actually seen in real life and in photos all sorts of objects that just get crushed. Like even quarters and coins, they'll fly right out of your pockets, your phone, and it'll go into the tunnel and it'll... <laughs> Like we have a net up on top, so people can't go up there, but mm -hmm. but stuff will, and yeah, it'll just shred. Yeah, shreds anything. Totally shreds. Yeah, if you have quarters, it'll bend them. Whoa! Yeah, it's powerful fans. These things are huge. How many fans really are strong. there in there? So some tunnels have as many as five fans, but our tunnel's gonna have two. Oh, just two fans. Yeah, two fans, one in each air duct. Um, and then uh, so I mean. Is there a lot of electricity here? Is that why you only have two fans? It is quite a bit of electricity. Um, so as far as the fans go, if there's five fans, they're smaller, and they kind of make up the whole diameter or circumference of um, the flying chamber up above you. And if mm -hmm. it's large fans, then they're just really big to accommodate that. So the, the fans take up the same amount of space, but if you have more, they got to be smaller. Um, as far as electricity goes, it does use 860 kilowatts per hour of electricity so it's quite a bit mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and then um and so it's it's a lot of energy but you know i'm guessing you're probably gonna put something like solar on solar on the roof yeah we've gotten quotes we're very interested in putting up solar um it would take a lot of solar to offset that so we would have to probably get a big piece of property and do like a solar farm kind of thing but yeah we're in the go green trend and um, i would like to follow that well i i think that'd be great and um you know, it would also save a little bit of, uh, you know, give us some, give us some extra, extra boost in terms of jobs. Now, speaking of jobs, how many people do you think would be employed in such a place? Yeah, we're gonna have 19 staff members. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so just about 20 new jobs, and that's yeah. gonna be the first one, right? That's correct. Yeah. So if there's another, then we'll double that. We'll be 40. Oh, okay. And <laughs> is there plans for two, or is it, uh, is it difficult because of the uh, process involved in building it? Yeah. Well, I, I think. We're, well, we're going to start with one because it is quite a difficult process. Um, I believe that it's going to be so popular. If I think it would work to have two tunnels on here, but that's just speculation. Of course, we'll find out once we build the first one and see how busy we are. Well, let's get that going already. 18 months. I know. I'm not sure I could wait that long. <laughs> well, then again, we are the first to talk about it. So that's, mm -hmm. that is, that is pretty neat. Sure. Stuff. You got in early. Well, and, um, you know, if, say, for example, I'm flying and, you know, we have a power outage, which never happens here. I've never had a power <laughs> outage ever. Oh my goodness. Ever living on Oahu for all these years. That's but a joke, right? Because there was a huge one like two years ago. Really? Yeah, it was like all downtown. Really? Do you live downtown? No, but it was all, the whole island, actually. Oh, there was a whole island. Yes. Sorry, I was downtown. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is that we have power outages here occasionally. Okay. And if I'm flying around and I'm at the top of your tower because I'm 
you know, I want to see how much I can, how much change I can put on the on the top <laughs> of your of your wind tunnel. What happens? Do I fall and uh, and hurt myself, or how does that work? Yeah. So because it's a recirculating system, the air is constantly in motion. So it's similar to when you turn off your ceiling fan. It'll still spin. Uh, still spin. Yeah, so our fans still spin, but they're slower, but the air is still moving. So it will let you down. It's not going to be a comfortable landing, but you're not going to get hurt. Mm. As long as uncle's down there. <laughs> as long as uncle's blocking. <laughs> as long as uncle's blocking. But it's pretty much the same thing, right? Because uncle's down there, and then he blocks my air, and then he falls, and I fall on top of him. It's perfect. We got it. All right. <laughs> yeah, and it is kind of like a trampoline base anyway, so you just bounce right back up. <laughs> And uh, you know when when this thing's not running, can you do anything else? Is it is it just this is the only experience there is, or is there other learning opportunities that the center is going to do? Is it going to give back to the community somehow? Oh yeah, we're actually very excited about um, our plans for learning and cultural activities and things. Um, so the first one that we want to implement is actually in the construction phase or even pre-construction. So I've already contacted UH and I'd like to reach out to HPU and Shaman and all the universities and even just to the public. So anybody who's interested in engineering, oh boy, is this a fun project for them. So we're gonna have an open door policy. They can come in and they can work side by side with our consultants as they create this wind tunnel and, and do all the planning for it. And so they get the hard hats on, you know, they can walk through the construction site and really just be a part of it. We wanna encourage kids to continue to learn and give them these hands-on experiences that may be kind of limited in Hawaii, especially for unique projects like wind tunnels. So hopefully we'll get these kids super excited about continuing their education in engineering. You, know, you should talk to Sonny, because that's what he did with the HPU students. That'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. Our first guest earlier today. Either ways, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this when we get back from the break. This is Think Tech. Stay tuned. We're back, we're live, and you're listening to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Saras, and here we are talking with Kathy Custer about wind tunnels and on Oahu. Fun stuff. But uh, before we get back to the conversation, Jay Fidel, do you have some announcements for our listeners? Yes, I do, Attila. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are doing a great show. It, it really, really entertaining and interesting. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Anyway, uh, so uh, Thursday, March 28th at the Plaza Club, uh, Think Tech and the Hawaii Venture Capital Association will do their next program. This one is entitled Fiscal Policy in the 2013 Legislature. How can we pay for the things that we need? So we're going to have uh, Calbert Young. He's the State Director of Budget and Finance. He's going to tell us about, about fiscal policy in the 2013 Legislature. We have Tom Apple, the Chancellor of UH Manoa. We have Senator David Ige, the, the chair of the uh, Senate Finance Committee. Richard Lim, the uh, chair of the uh, Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Josh Green, uh, the chair, is a senator, the chair of the Senate Health Committee, and others covering energy, education, health, business development, and more. We're going to cover all of the basic uh, requirements uh, for all these initiatives. So what are the priorities when you don't have all the money you need to pay for the programs you want? and that you do need. It used to be that we had the money we needed uh, for these critical programs, and, and uh, we had some money left over from grant, for grants and aid, if you remember that. It was only 10 or 15 years ago. Now there are annual struggles and competitions to pay for the programs we want. So what do we do? Uh, what is our fiscal policy to make things work? Do we spend less, you know, like the sequestration issue in the federal government? Uh, do we tax more? March 28th, everybody should be interested. Uh, everybody is going to be affected. Uh, check it out at the Plaza Club, 11.30 a.m. that morning. If you want to register, it's hvca.org. Thanks, Attila. Back to you. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate the announcement. And, uh, you know, that, that I think affects us all mm. because it's, it's uh, you know, our entire state depends on the small business because that's, those are going to be the big earners. Those are, those are going to be the companies in the uh, next 10 years. Yes, and uh, Sonny Bagualia probably has some things to say too, don't you think? I would love to have him back on the show. We can talk, <laughs> we can talk a little bit more about that. But, uh, you know, uh, 
we were talking during the break about you know just saying thank you to the people who who've helped us get this far and uh, you know your name is Kathy and that reminded me of my mom so I'd like to put out a shout out to my mom <laughs> who I know is listening and she's probably jumping up and down right now oh, that's sweet. but uh, thanks mom love you very much appreciate all, all that you've done over the years and you had some people to thank also yeah actually my mom and dad they're listening too and um, I'm just so thankful for everything that they've done for me. They're incredibly supportive. And then Raymond Riss, my business consultant, has been with me all four years. He's amazing, always goes above and beyond. And then Rosa Navarro Hoffman, she's my cultural consultant. She teaches me how to do business in the culture of Hawaii, which is very important. So. Wow. Yeah, thank, thank you all. So many people helping you. And, and that's the thing, you know, no one's an island. And it sounds mm -hmm. to me like even the, this wind tunnel project, there's a lot of people involved. Oh, oh, it's huge, right? Yeah, there really are. There's 13 gentlemen on my board of advisors, um, and then one woman. <laughs> so Why are I shouldn't you say all gentlemen. Why oh, because laughing? I said gentlemen. But yeah, there's yeah Rosa, she's in there too. And um, yeah, I've just gotten so much support. It feels like hundreds of people have just been so supportive, and they always check in and they're like, "How's it going?" You know. So yeah, I'm just so thankful for everybody. Well, and, and that's and that's what's good about doing business in Hawaii is that you'll find lots of people to help you. Oh, that's true. And uh, you know, some of these, um, you know, a lot of tech tech ventures that, that start up here, uh, they create a, a working model, and then they you know they have the support and the community assistance and the and the ability to, to try it out mm -hmm. on on a small population, and then we can sell it to the mainland mm -hmm. and then bring in some more mainland money to help us in the state. Isn't that great? Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> So, and, and in some ways, I think your project is doing is doing the same. Now, we're going to have, I'm guessing, this this could be a good uh, tourist attraction, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. In fact, the wind tunnel in Hollywood, all they cater to, pretty much 80% of their business is tourism. So, yep, we're going to try to get close to Waikiki, but um, just outside of it so we can still cater to the local community as well. So central Oahu where the high density populations are but we we are welcoming visitors um, especially because we have so many cultural things going on that we really want to teach them the Hawaiian legends that have to do with the wind gods and you know the rare species oh. of owl and all of these things um, we're gonna have murals on the walls from floor to ceiling and storytellers there around the clock um, oh, so teaching these people it, that reminds me of what I saw in Alani they, they really tried to bring in some other local uh, artists and uh, and storytellers mm -hmm. to kind of uh, you and know, the menehune yeah, that are hidden exactly. all over their hotel. All over the hotel. And, you know, you have the story and, a, you know, the story of Hawaii out there. I mean, I think this is, are you going to do this sort of the same thing to try to integrate the culture? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm very, very excited about that aspect of it. So I have a few people that are helping me that, that know a lot more than I do, you know, that are, are educating and teaching me so then I can pass that on. We're also going to be doing live performances. So we're going to bring really? these legends to life. The local talents, musical talent, I'm guessing. Yeah, we sure will. And they're going to be flying in the wind tunnel. So that's going to be part of the, the performances. But they are Polynesian legends. There's wind gods, flying goddesses, you know, and the rare species of Hawaiian owl. And so we'll So So how does a performer fly in the wind tunnel and perform? Yes, yeah, so it'll it's like a theatrical performance. So we're going to have music on the outside of the tunnel, you know, so people can hear it. And then dancers and, you know, the MC and things. And then, um, for example, if there's... Um, so the wind tunnel is kind of like in the middle of a stage? It that? is. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. so there'll be kind of like stadium seating around it. Yeah, so they can watch performers in the tunnel and around the tunnel and interacting with the audience. Oh, okay. And and so the tunnel doesn't necessarily have to be on for the stage to work, right? Correct, yeah. So you can still have a performance there mm -hmm. and turn on the wind tunnel and you got to performer in the middle that's right yeah so it just adds to it just adds yeah to it. but we yeah we'd really like to aim that at the cultural and the Polynesian legends mm -hmm. so and and that way you could have you could tell stories mm -hmm. storytelling. Do storytelling and um, you know uh, are, you, are you thinking of putting other attractions kind of around it like anything related to food or yes, other actually. entertainment or any you know obviously t-shirts and everything else that's gift shops given but what what else can you can you say that would, might help bring jobs into your location or might mm -hmm. uh, spread the, the word of Hawaii out, out to uh, visitors. Yeah, so we've actually come together with Ali'i International. So Billy Balding is the gentleman that's behind that project and he has some big plans. He's going to have a skate park there where they... they Ali'i International. Yes, that's correct. Now, what do they do? All sorts of things. But right now what they're doing is... For you. Uh, let's just say, what do they do for you? Oh, me? what do they do for me? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they have a variety of um, things that they do. But yes, so right now it's a development project for them. And so mm. I'm just a part of it. And they've allowed me to, to be a part of it. And they did receive their 
um, HCDA approved their use permit two weeks ago. HCDA, what's that? Yeah, the Hawaii Community Development Authority. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was a really big step for them. Um, so their plans are, it's going to be like an amusement park. So they're going to have a skate park um, where they're going to teach the kids not only how to skate, but also the culture of skating and how the boards are made and how the etiquette is and, and just so much more. And they're going to have a stationary surf wave. And then carnival surf rides. Wave. Yeah, the schools here, some of them are having surfing as an extracurricular activity. So it's considered like PE or like gym. So it's a really safe environment for them to continue that physical education. Can you surf in this wind tunnel? Oh, yeah, you could take a snowboard in. What? Yeah, you have to be really good though, otherwise you'll scratch up the walls. Well, but how about a surfboard? I mean, surfboards are pretty. Or how about a boogie board? How about something simple like that? As long that? as it's strapped to your feet, we'll let you take it in. <laughs> Is it strapped? I'm not sure I've strapped a boogie board to my feet before. You're going to have to strap it. But uh, so, so you could so you could learn another sport. Because I, I know I, sh I saw that on Shark Tank. You know, they had like this the surfboard that they were putting into fitness centers. And you could oh, pretend awesome. to pretend to be paddling and then it was exercise, <laughs> which I like probably a little bit better. You don't, you know, cut up your feet and, you know, you don't drink any seawater. Do they splash water at you? I uh, know. It's, it's <laughs> uh, maybe bottle. like a spray mist. bottle. <laughs> Here's a little mist for your, your for your efforts. But it's, it's really good exercise. Oh, so it could be a fitness thing also. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Flying indoors is a huge workout. Even just two minutes after you fly, you're going to feel it in your pecs and in your arms because in order to change your direction in the tunnel, you're actually pressing against the wind. Mm -hmm. So this is like resistance training. Oh, yeah, forget the treadmill. Come indoor skydiving. And then you can go on the uh, on the skateboarding park. That's right next to it. Yeah, you can go to the skate park and the stationary wave pool. And there's going to be carnival rides. Carnival ride. What, what kind of carnival rides? Like the kind for the younger keiki. So the idea is that not only... Um, you know, it's, it's really supposed to be a fun and educational cultural center with a Hawaiian theme for the, the keiki, um, the, the youth, and the kapuna. So they can all come together and have a place to enjoy themselves. Wow, that is going to be really fun. And I want to be one of the first people in your wind tunnel. Did I hear test pilot? I'm sorry. Oh, no. I hear no, test no. pilot? <laughs> oh, no. That may require a helmet. That, that violates my <laughs> wife's law. So, But uh, thank you, Kathy, for coming on the show. It's been really great to have you on, and I really appreciate you sharing what you're, what you're doing. Oh, thank you, and Attila. Thanks for giving us the scoop. And uh, for more information about this project, do you have a website you'd like to share? No, actually. This is the very first public announcement that we have done oh, on this wind tunnel. Okay. So more to come. Yeah, more to come. More to come, mm -hmm. more to come. Well, you know what? If any of you listening have missed any part of this program, uh, you know, be sure to visit our website and download the podcast. Our website is thinktechhawaii.com. And if you like our program, like us on Facebook. You know, thank you, Kathy, for having us uh, having us interview you and uh, giving us everything that, uh, that you did. So um, <laughs> as a reminder, our, our show is live streamed on Spreaker.com, video on Ustream.com. If you want to catch any of them, visit us on ThinkTechHawaii.com. Thanks to everyone, uh, our chief engineer, Jack Waters, Jay Fidel, and thank you for listening. We'll be back next Friday, but be sure to tune in on Wednesday with Jay Fidel for more ThinkTech. Remember to appreciate life, do good to others, and have a great weekend. Aloha. Aloha.